we actually looked at student voices this time and a lot of students thought that um, cultural relevance only happens in English classes but it's really something that should happen in all classes. There's the math teacher who asked well how does that look into my classroom right so I think that is the part of our plan to really show examples and find the resources for all the classes so we can discuss and we can learn how does that look in in a math class how does that look in a chemistry class right it, because it's important for students to feel represented. We're talking a lot about collaboration between teachers and one of the ideas was where a teacher uh, peer edits or like peer review each other lessons and see what's successful so we can implement that in our teaching practice. We're talking about the first implementation is like really creating a template uh, for teachers to follow that would uh, list a lot of things. Okay, well, what is the priority standard here? What are the ELD standards? Or what are different things that, that should just be universal for all the teachers and for us to have when we are designing our lessons? So specifically in my group, um, which is looking at emergent multilingual students, we were talking about a PD plan and kind of a roadmap um, and thinking about how we can really um, look at that tier one support for students and how can we increase our um, instructional knowledge with all teachers to support our, our EM students so that they have that foundational tier one curriculum that's really supportive. Um, and so we're really excited about that potential PD plan um, for the district. We're also kind of aligning with the MTSS framework and thinking about the work that our district is doing with that as well and kind of bringing the two together. So something that we kind of started to have a conversation about was tier two and tier three supports that are specific to our EM students and how can we really um, make sure that we're doing what we can at the site level to um, support our students in the tier two and tier three levels. One of the things that I got really excited about um, was kind of focusing on the seal of biliteracy. We really came at that action step from an asset-based lens. So thinking about our, our emergent multilingual students and how knowing another language is really an asset and we, that's to be celebrated. And I think that that's, um, something that if we can really increase our awareness around the seal of biliteracy and celebrate students who speak multiple languages, that will um, help student outcomes because they will feel successful at school, we can celebrate them, we can make being multilingual just the celebration that it is, right? And um, so I think that was something that got me really excited today. So we've been talking about communication of the information and strategies for disseminating the information to these groups and how we can do this and how we can target their needs and um, prioritizing during the day, during the night, um, translating different information specifically related to college and career. Also planning outreach support for academics such as um, making sure students are aware of the AP classes, the IB classes, the dual enrollment, um, CTE classes, and career opportunities. We've talked about um, utilizing our, our counseling staff, our career college and career specialists, our community liaisons, and how we can all come together and provide that information. What, another thing that we, um, an action step that we've talked about to achieve our goal in college and career readiness is creating an individualized four-year plan and having one-on-one -on -one meetings, having parent information nights where parents can learn as well about the options that are available to these students and to taking an individualized plan and creating that for all, the, for all students and revisiting it every year and seeing um, what their interests are, how our schools can support them in these interests and provide them with more information. I would like to see some real sustained change in the culture and climate at our schools. And to me that means having leadership really set the tone and carry that through with commitment and fidelity. 
again, sort of falling on that theme about how things come from the top, that really requires that we as a staff um, do the work to discover our own biases and to continually to explore what it means to be anti-racist teachers and to implement those um, pedagogies on an ongoing basis. So that's not something we do in professional development at the beginning of the year, but it's something that we start off every morning thinking about. Then the other action that we want to take is to think about staff diversity. Um, it's been established that uh, more diversity in our teaching staff benefits all students and in particular really helps our students of color to have role models, to have a cultural understanding, um, and that teachers of color have higher expectations for their students of color as well. We want to make sure that we're increasing our uh, pipeline through recruitment, through that selection process, through hiring, and then through retention. I've sat on hiring panels as a parent and was um, surprised by the number of times I heard teachers uh, or staff talk about how that person just felt comfortable to them. They felt like that was someone they could work with. And that is exactly the kind of place that those biases come into play. So to the extent that we can be um, objective, we can talk about um, consistent look-fors, um, and that we can be uh, like immediately present with our own biases and understand how that affects our comfort, um, then maybe we can also have uh, more success in hiring a diverse staff.